In this series, Throwback, we're talking about building faith, getting faith lessons from Old Testament heroes. And today, I want to just talk to you from this thought, work your weakness. Work your weakness. Uh, I really want to be vulnerable with you uh, today. I want to be transparent with you. Um, I oftentimes feel weak and insecure. Um, I can just struggle with feeling weak and feeling insecure. Uh, God's called me to be a pastor and I'm an introvert and I can struggle with some social anxiety and I don't always like it. Um, It's a weakness for me. I I don't put that in my strength category to step into social settings and having anxiety feeling awkward, it's, it's a weakness for me. At times, I feel unqualified to be a pastor. I've struggled with it throughout the years. I, I didn't grow up in a, in a pastor's home, a preacher's home. I didn't get that kind of experience. And actually, the, the, the opposite would be true. Um, I, I never was on a church staff. So before we started People's Church, I never was on a church staff. I didn't get to see their inner workings. And it's just, it's just been a weakness. And at times I can just struggle with insecurity because of it. I, I think one of my, my greatest struggles, I'm trying to give you just some of my top weaknesses and struggles and insecurities because I got a list of them. These would be my top ones. I struggle with feeling like I'm enough. Um, I have battled feeling like, will I ever be a good enough dad? Uh, Will I be a good enough husband? Um, Will I be a good enough leader? I don't feel like I am. I I don't feel like God battle with can I preach good enough God help me to be able to communicate your word I just I just struggle with feeling inadequate like I'm I'm not enough and what I want you to think about for a few moments is what makes you feel weak what makes you feel insecure maybe it's your appearance you you think about your hair or your nose or your eyes and you just feel insecure maybe you feel too short or too tall or too big or too small maybe you don't like your voice but you just feel weak maybe it's your education you're just you not you don't do well in school or or you just started school and things are not going well already or or maybe with your education you you didn't finish your degree you were dropped you dropped out and you just you feel insecure about it or you just feel unqualified maybe it's your financial status and you just feel like I just don't have enough money I, I, you look at your debt or you look at your bills and you just you're struggling to make ends meet and it just makes you feel weak maybe it's your relationship status and it makes you feel weak. Maybe you desire to get married, and it's a desire of your heart, and it just seems like it's not happening. I mean, God, when and it makes you feel, it makes you feel weak. Maybe you're married and you want to be single. That's a different sermon, but, but, but you know, you just feel weak. You're, Am I going to ever measure up? Can I ever be the spouse that that my spouse needs? And you just feel weak. Maybe it's in your job or, or your career. You thought you would have a better job by now or you thought you would have gotten the promotion or, or may, maybe you just don't even like your career. You, you don't like where, your job and, and it just makes you feel weak. And, and here's what I want us to learn today. When you feel weak, when you feel insecure, you are a prime candidate for God to use in a mighty way. You see, God specializes in using weak and insecure people. So if you feel weak today, you're the perfect person for God to use. And what I want to do today is I want us to learn this principle from an Old Testament hero named Ahud. And I know when I say his name, he's not Uh, doesn't jump off the page like David or Joseph or Moses, and yet he was a powerful Old Testament hero, and we're going to study him today in Judges chapter number three. 
Let me begin by reading one verse out of his story. We'll read several others in just a little bit. But ver the first verse I want us to see about this great deliverer was, again, in verse 15, again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. And he gave them a deliverer, a HUD, a left-handed, come on, every location, online, everybody shout, left-handed. He was a left-handed man, the son of Gera the Benjamite. The Israelites sent him with a tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. And the Bible points out that Ahud was left-handed. And, and this was a big deal back in Bible days, and especially for a leader, for a deliverer for Israel. And what I want to do these next few moments is give you three lessons from a left-handed deliverer. And the first lesson is this. God wants you to embrace your uniqueness. Being left-handed was a real big deal back in Bible days, and it was not just a big deal. It was unique in Bible days, and it's still unique today. Approximately 10% of the population is left-handed. I'm curious today in all of our locations, how many of you are left-handed? Just lift your hand real quick. Where, where am I left-handed? Okay, we got some left-handed. Come on, give it up for all the left-handed people today. Yeah. About 10% of the population. And, and not only was Ehud, Ehud left-handed, but he was from the tribe of Benjamin. And what's so interesting about this is Benjamin means son of the right hand. So, so Ehud is a part of a tribe that means son of the right hand, and he's left-handed. It's pretty crazy. He was so unique. And the reality is this, we are all unique. And we have to embrace our uniqueness. You are unique. You are unique. It's okay. You are unique. Just look at your neighbor and say that to him. Just say, you are unique, not weird. You're not weird. You're unique. Did you realize there are more than three million differences between your DNA and anyone else's in the world? including your parents and siblings. There are over 8,300,000 possible combinations of 23 chromosomal pairs that make up each person. Each of these chromosomal pairs contains anywhere from a dozen to a thousand of different genes. So, so here's what this means. The number of possible genetic combinations is four to the three billionth power. Your calculator can't even cal calculate that high. <laughs> Say, Pastor, what are, what are you saying? I, I, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you are unique. You're unique. You, and, and understand that you're unique by God's design. You're not unique by accident. The scripture says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. And some of you need to hear this today. God created you in his image. He does not make mistakes. People may have told you that you're worthless or that you're junk or that you're trash, you're, you, that you're a mistake. And I'm here to tell you, no, no, no. You're unique and you're created in the image of God. God made you on purpose for a purpose. The scripture says in Psalm 139 verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. And you need to understand you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're, you are amazing, you are a masterpiece, you are unique and it's by God's design. And I want to encourage you today, embrace your uniqueness. I, I've had to learn this over the years. I've had to learn to embrace my uniqueness. God made me the way that I am. God gave me my introverted personality. God gave me the gifts and talents that I have. And so now I'm not trying to change me. No, I want to just give me to God and I want God to develop me to be the best version of Herbert Cooper that I can be. I want to be the best version of me because can't nobody beat me being me and can't nobody beat you 
being you. God made each of us unique because he has a unique purpose for each of us to accomplish. Scripture says it like this in Romans chapter 12 and verse 4. For just as each of us has one body with many members. We got one body but many members. Our, even our physical bodies are unique. And he says, and these members do not all have the same function. Unique, unique, unique. And he's comparing it to us. He says, so in Christ... We, though many, we're many, we're, we're unique, but we form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. The Bible says we are one body of Christ, but we have different functions. We all have our own unique purpose to fulfill. You see, I think about my own life. Herbert and Tiffany Cooper, we have a unique purpose to fulfill. Nobody else on planet Earth was supposed to start a church called People's Church in 2002 at the Quell Springs Mall. That was Herbert and K Tiffany Cooper's assignment. And 20 years ago, we started People's Church to impact a specific group of people with the love of God. It's your friends and your family. It's your life and your kids and your grandkids that are being impacted by, by the ministry God called us to. Two, it's, it's, it's unique. It's unique. Nobody else is called to be Kel, Cade, Karis, and Casey's dad and mom. That's me and Tiffany's job. Matter of fact, this is not in my notes. Pray for your pastor. I just dropped my oldest son off in, to college. Uh, drove 20 hours, me and Tiffany, Thursday and Friday. Dropped my boy off. I told everybody I wasn't going to cry. Lord Jesus. I cried. I hugged him. I didn't want to let go. And I flew back from Florida yesterday. But I'm called to be their daddy. If I don't do my role, they're not going to experience all that God wants them to experience. They're not going to be developed all the ways that God wants them to be, be developed because that's my unique purpose on this earth. And God has a unique purpose for your life. He has specific people he wants you to impact with a specific personality, with the unique gifts that he's given you. God has made you to impact people's lives. He created you. He wired you. Maybe you're a teacher. He wants you to use those gifts that he's given you to impact kids. Maybe it's a principal or a college professor or a scientist or maybe you're a business owner or an engineer or you work in the medical field or you're a singer or a musician or you work in technology or IT or you're a, a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're a parent, you're a friend. God has put specific people in your life because he wants you to impact them with his love. It's not by accident you're here on purpose and for a purpose, even in our church. Can I tell you, there are specific people that God wants you to impact. There are people that if you don't lead that small group, they're not going to get connected in the way that they should. Because God has assigned you to impact those people. There are kids in our kids ministry. There are teenagers in our youth ministry. There are young adults at Recharge that God has assigned you to impact. And if you don't use your gifts, if you don't use your talents to impact their life, they're never going to be all that they could be in this season because God has that assignment on your life. You are unique and you're created to impact a specific group of people. Here's the second thing that I want you to see. The second thing I want you to see is God qualifies the unqualified. The tribe of Benjamin was the smallest of all the tribes of Israel. Matter of fact, Saul, who was a king of Israel, he was from the tribe of Benjamin. And I want you to hear how he described his own tribe in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 21. It says, Saul answered, but am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel? And is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? And Ahud was from the smallest tribe of Israel. So now catch this. He's from the smallest tribe of Israel. And his, his tribe is also called son of the left hand is what it means. This brother was unqualified times two. 
smallest trot, son of the left hand, and now he's left-handed in this society. He's considered weak, unqualified. The people would not have chosen him to be the deliverer of Israel, to defeat the enemy. Because in that culture, in that society, and you can see it all throughout the Bible, being right-handed was a sign of power. It was a sign of strength. I want to just teach this to you. It's so interesting to see this. Uh, all of you, 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 you'll find this fascinating. As you look in the Bible, right-handed, a sign of power and strength. Uh, let's, let's look at this. Exodus chapter 15, verse, uh, verse 6. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. Isaiah 41.10, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not, be, be, not anxiously, anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 17.7, show me the wonders of your great love. You who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you. Psalm chapter 44, verse 3, it was not by sword that, that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face. Psalm chapter 110, verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Luke chapter, 20, chapter 22, verse 69, but from now on the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated, is, is, is seated at the right hand of God. So catch this. Although the right hand was a sign of power and strength, although the tribe of Benjamin was the son of the right hand, God chose and used a left-handed man. A man who was considered unqualified. I can only imagine what Ehud thought when God told him to deliver his people. Hey, God, I'm, I'm weak. I'm unqualified. And we all have reasons why we feel unqualified to do what God's told us to do. Maybe you feel weak. You say, well, God, you, you just don't understand. My, my children are too small. Or they're, they're too old. I just, I feel unqualified. I, I'm single or I'm married or I'm a, I'm a single parent or I'm divorced or I'm new to church. Or you know what? God, you, you, you can't use me. I'm unqualified. You see how jacked up my family is? You see my physical sickness? God, I'm too old. I'm too young. God, 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 I've been abused. God, God, I, I didn't finish my education. God, I've lost my job. I don't have enough resources. And, and, and we feel unqualified. And here's what I want you to understand about your God. God qualifies the unqualified. God qualifies the unqualified. God qualifies <laughs> the unqualified. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says this about every Christ follower. But you, that's talking about you, every person that's faith is in Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you're chosen by God. No matter your personality, you're a royal priesthood. No matter your mistakes or failures, you're a holy nation. No matter your GPA, your accolades, your achievements, your bank account, your career, your possession, you are special to God. People's Church, hear your pastor. You're chosen by God. You're chosen by God. So stop disqualifying yourself. Stop tearing yourself down. Stop thinking you're a nobody. Stop saying you're a loser. Stop saying God can't use little old me. No, he made you unique. He made you in the image of himself. You are unique with a purpose, for a purpose, to impact a specific group of people. And I want you to know you may be point out your left hand. You may be saying I'm unqualified. Your God qualifies the unqualified.
the third thing that I want you to see, the third, and that is this. God displays his power in our weakness. And what many consider to be Ahud's weakness, you got to catch this, was the very thing God used to deliver Israel from an evil king. I'm going to read several verses about Ahud. you got to pay attention to this. It's such a cool story. Judges chapter 3, verse 16 goes on to say, Now Ahud had made a double-edged sword about a cubit long, which he strapped to his right, that's important, his right thigh under his clothing. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was a very fat man. After Ahud had presented the tribute, he sent on his way those who had carried it. But on reaching the stone image, images near Gilgal, he himself went back to Eglon and said, Your majesty, I have a secret message for you. The king said to his attendants, Leave us. And they all left. Ahud approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message from God for you. As the king rose from his seat, Ahud reached with his left hand. The Bible points it out. Drew the sword from his right thigh and plunged it into the king's belly. Even though the handle sank in after the blade and his bowels discharged, Ahud did not pull the sword out and the fat closed in over it. Then Ahud went out to the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. You didn't even know that was in your Bible. You got to read your Bible. There's some fascinating stuff in your Bible. Okay, check this out. When Ahud arrived at the king's palace, there's no doubt he's the king of Moab. No, there's no doubt they, they searched him. And they're searching that right hip because they're thinking, got to be a, he's right-handed. He's, he's, he's the deliverer. He's got to be right. So, so they're checking. And he gets in front of the king trying to deliver his people. And they didn't check this. They checked this left hip, not this right one. And the very thing that others saw as a weakness, God displayed his power through what others would call his weakness. Because God loves to display his power in our weaknesses. That's what God does. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. God loves to display his power in our weakness. The very thing you think that makes you weak is the very thing that God wants to display his power in through your life. God loves to work in our weakness. We, we get so focused on our strength and we want to make our list of all the things that are so, so strong, but God loves to display his power in your weak areas. Do you know why? Because he'll get all the glory. And so what, what I've learned is just to work my weakness. God, I give you my weakness and put it in your hand. And then God has showed up and displayed his power in my weakness. God, I'm that country boy from Rewoka, Oklahoma. I made a 17 on the ACT. How am I preaching in front of thousands of people? Boy, work your weakness. Work your weakness. Work your left hand. Work your Work your weakness. God, I'm that boy that was lost in sin, addicted. When I got saved, called into ministry, people were like, because everybody knew my business as we woke up. Oh, but God displayed his power. Work your weakness. Work your weakness. God, I'm an introvert. I get social anxiety. How am I going to pastor a church? Son, give it to me. Give it to me. Because I'll display my power in your weakness. Work 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 your left hand. Work. Work. 
God, I'll never be a good enough dad. I'll never be a good enough husband. I'll never be a good enough leader. I'll never be a good enough preacher. God, you see all my weaknesses. Son, just give it to me. Work your weakness. 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 I'm here to tell somebody, give your weakness to God. He displays his power through your weakness. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Work your weakness. 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 Give him your left hand. Work your weakness. Let him display his power through your weakness. Work your weakness. Work your weakness. Display your power, Lord. I'm not enough, but you're enough. Isaiah 40, 40, verse 29, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Give God your weakness and let him increase your power. He'll put his ability on your liability. He'll put his power on your sour. He'll put his super on your natural and then work supernatural through your life. Work your weakness. Work your weakness. Work your Work your weakness. There are people that will never be impacted the way they should. They'll never experience the love of God the way they should unless you embrace your uniqueness. Realize that God qualifies the unqualified. As you realize God does his best work in 